Dr. Choice and I am an anthropologist for the Husky Hominid Museum. I study human genetics. My project is about the family tree, so it explains each group of the hominids. I want people to come to my exhibit and learn how they adapted to their environment and how they survived. The homo group lived one million years ago. They walked on two legs, used tools, had bigger brains, opposable thumbs, and hands capable of power and grip. Paranthropus group. The Paranthropus group lived two million years ago. They also had large, cheap, powerful jaws that allowed them to eat on varieties of food, like seeds, nuts, and hard fruits. The Australopithecus group lived three to four million years ago. They walked upright and climbed trees. The Artipithecus group lived five to six million years ago. They involved from Africa and were first to walk upright and forward fully without climbing on trees. Hi, my name is Dr. Wilson and my exhibit is, is called Brainiac. I am a neuroanthropologist. I study human I study human brains and animal animal brains. My exhibit is about three brains: the dog brain, the human brain, and the frog brain. People should learn about the dog brain because the dog brain has an old factory bulb bulb right here, and it can sniff out different things, and it can sniff out dogs' butts sometimes. The human brain has a lots of folds because the human brain thinks more about their actions than other brains. The folds are like when you have when you fold your clothes into your drawers and you have and you have extra room so then like you can put more clothes in instead of just like shoving it all in. Hello, my name is Dr. Bloss. I am a physiologist for the Husky Hominid Museum, and I've been working on a bipedal robot. Physiologist studies like the movement of hominids and humans and everything in between. My exhibit will show um, a quadruped robot, which means walk. Um, animal walking on four legs. I am also showing a bipedal robot, which shows the ability to walk on two legs. The big importance of why we developed bipedalism was so we could do things while we were walking, like carry something or, or like nowadays, it would be playing on your phone or something. Balance is one of the hardest things when you're working on a bipedal robot because you have to make sure that you have a lot of support. Like we have our hands that we can move around and like support ourselves. Hello, my name is Dr. Henry and I am an anthropologist in the Husky Hominid Museum. An anthropologist studies animal behavior. My exhibit is about uh, a campsite. What is, it's basically what you would see if you were a hominid and you, you were home. I want people to learn about the things that they hunted, the shelters that they built, and how they used fire to prepare food. I'm Dr. Maya. And I'm Dr. Grayson. And we are geologists for the Hominid Husky Museum. The first thing we'll be showing you is our board game, which can show you the layers between the hominids and where the bones got stuck in between them. What do geologists do? They study rocks. And uh, I have a fun fact for you guys. Uh, there is the, um, bit, uh, the lower the layer, the um, the older the bones are, but once it, they come up, the younger the bones are, and those old uh, younger bones that uh, they stay up and get found, and then the older ones come up every 
couple of years or so. So basically, the layers are basically sure. created out of lava. So when there's an earthquake, the layers kind of shift and give more layers so it will come up. Because the more layers, it's kind of like stilts. The more you have, the taller you'll be. We want you guys to learn about our game and to have a little fun and not have to be bored like most museums are because I see some people do that. My name is Dr. Kyle and I'm a paleoanthropologist. A paleoanthropologist means I study fossils and bones. My exhibit is about the different predators that the hominids had. Predators are like animals or things that try to attack, like prey. Well, I would like people to learn about the different predators that the hominids had in my exhibit and the different types, some of the different types of bones. Uh, some of the different bones are like the femur bone and the long bone and different types of skulls. And different predators are like eagles and lion and different tools and weapons. Uh, sometimes you could tell how a hominid died by what different like things are left by the dead body, like different clues to see what might have killed it. I'm Dr. Jimena. I am a archeologist. They studied the food and tools. They should learn about how Chimpanzees um, used rocks and sticks and evolved them to spears. Chimpanzees um, used sticks to dig into ant holes and they used a rock to cut their nuts. Neanderthals also used rocks and sticks, but instead they um, cut the rock and made it sharper and added it onto a stick. The pieces that I did to my exhibit was that, that you can see the different foods that they ate and you can also see what tools they used. Hi, my name is Dr. Jan Cow. Um, I'm an archeologist, so I study um, the tools that hominids used. My exhibit is mostly about um, the tools they used, and uh, if you want to buy one, um, you can get them right here. When people come to my exhibit, they should learn about how um, the tools evolved, starting at the chopper, then the bifacial, then it comes to the ancient pickaxe and hammer, then the spear comes later on. Like Lucy's group had the chopper, um, then the handyman had the bifacial spear, and pickaxes came from the um, Neanderthals. The Australopithecus skulls have like the big holes to because it has bigger muscles to help like crunch on harder things and but we don't have as big holes there so that's why we can't like crunch on harder things as much as like Australopithecus and other animals. Flip that because we have a bigger forehead than a bigger forehead than chimpanzees. They thought we used more tools but Jane Goodall proved them wrong and said that they did use tools and had proof. 
Uh, I would like to point out how the teeth are more flat than they usually are and how they have more of a more of bangs in teeth because like most of the teeth are flat but then they have one tooth that can break things easily and is mostly used for eating. The Cyanite teeth are called canines and yeah they really can help with people catching prey. I have to say that Humans are smarter than all the other schools. We are the biggest head out of this champion league, as you can see. This is a big forehead around the uh, the head, and it helps you. Th it helps you have a bigger brain than other things. And we are smarter because we have technology right now, so we're smarter than the cavemen. The Google. <laughs> Yeah, Google Plus. Um, the importance of cave painting is, is it's our first way to know um, how people would communicate, um, like Neanderthals, because they didn't have writing. This shows, like who they are, what they like, and what did they do at the, what did they do at the time. They tell us like the stories, a bunch of stuff that they did. My favorite part about the project was learning about which hominid used what tools. My favorite part was the painting because it took a lot of time and effort. My favorite part about this project was researching and using my resources in Google Classroom, the website that Mr. Purdy gave me, and it gave me a lot of evidence and also looking up photos and sketching out my sketch multiple times. My favorite part about this project was probably building um, like building the tools and like the setup for this and my song. My favorite part about this project would have to be the the troubles of the bipedal robot were was probably like I said the balance and that was really fun to figure out how to get the balance like to make it look realistic but not but not to not keep it like on on its legs not crawling my favorite part of the project was probably doing the tree even though it was frustrating at first but it feels so good to get it finally done my favorite part about this project was probably painting on my clay pieces i used a lot of paint uh, some some very big sticks, a lot of paper, and rocks. I learned how to give things a lot more texture in painting, as you can see. The tools I used to complete this project it are some cardboard to, um, and paper to make this. I'm pretty sure that was foam board to make this sign. I used clay to make the tools, um, a Chromebook to help me research stuff. Started off from um, just like sorting out which tools went to which hominids. Then I started creating the tools and painting them. And then after that, I made I made my money over here. Then um, I made my sign, and finally I made. Um, this little stock shelf, as I will call it. I had patience with myself while working on the project. When one of the stone tools was kept on breaking, I just had patience and pushed, try to paint it all and then glued it together. Some different tools I used was like, if I got sidetracked, I just try to like maybe find things to help me keep going and stay focused like fidgets or different tools to like paint or 
used for clay. Uh, I try to have a good mindset and that kind of really helps me go through the way of it because having a good mindset kind of makes it easier and it really like brings out more fun like when you're not stressed it makes you worry about not much it's kind of like something you like like what i like like a baby likes going on the swings she likes she or he likes that so they're gonna keep on doing it that's how you should do it because they have a good mindset about going on the swings. probably the research process because i could gain some more data and information in a creative way. A really good tool that helped me was that, like my teachers were like helped me through the process and also like in, before uh, um, going in this clay, I actually like got to like uh, draw it out and I got to see like, oh, this works and this is how the folds work and this is how this works and like I got to see like all my friends like like different things that kind of like that were similar to this so I got to like see an idea so that like really helped me. Tape. Tape for sure.